everyone, Dan Cohen here with Mint Press News and behind the headlines. It is Friday evening here, I guess late afternoon here in Washington, D.C., 4.30 p.m. approximately. I'm just going to tweet this uh, live stream out real quick, and then we're going to get started. Um, and it is... Tweeted. Okay. Um, check out the chat. Okay. Looks like everything is working. So, this week I published a investigation that I'd been working on for about two weeks into Ukrainian propaganda, war propaganda, um, Ukrainian government war propaganda specifically. And, um, it's it's very multifaceted and it's catching some attention i just found out a minute ago that uh the russian ministry of foreign affairs and in particular um let's see if i can if i can find it maria zakharova yeah the um the Russian Foreign Ministry of Affairs spokesperson called it an amazing piece of investigative american investigative reporting um which is pretty remarkable. I guess it's officially Russian propaganda now. My article that has nothing to do with Russian money uh, and is it about Ukrainian and CIA cutout propaganda, I guess is now can be included in like a State Department report about Russian propaganda. Hopefully that happens. That'll be pretty entertaining. Um, I, I guess let's just get started into this thing and there's actually i mean in the last couple hours i've discovered an, an entire another kind of section of propaganda that i want to dive into i think i'll dive into later in this stream once i kind of go through this article and explain to everyone what exactly i found um if everyone if everyone if you haven't read it it's on mint press news of course called ukraine's propaganda war international PR firms, DC lobbyists, and CIA cutouts. And basically what I do is um, examine this sort of complex propaganda operation where you have PR firms, public relations firms, acting as the face um, of this operation. And they're working directly with the Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and um promoting a whole bunch of debunked propaganda constructs, which pretty much every day there's a new one. And this propaganda is constantly updated on a daily basis. And uh, there's also the aspect of media outlets they promote um, that, you know, claim to be independent media outlets in Russia, but as it turns out, they're anything but. So um, basically how it came on, how I stumbled across this, was um, I, I just came across this uh, this folder um, that, oh, now it has been made private. I just found out. That's a new development, unless I've been blocked. Let's see. Let's go ahead and see if this is, nope, it is now private. I'm going to go ahead on camera and declare victory if anyone else wants to go into my article which uh let me let me pull it up on the screen <laughs> this is this is rich i'm going to just pull this article up anyone else can go into it if they like so here's my article in mint press news if you scroll down to several paragraphs down and where fold and archived are highlighted you'll see it this folder used to be an open link, and it is now a, you can see it's closed. Now I need permission. So I guess that's victory. Um, <laughs> unless somehow they just blocked me, but I don't think they did. So I'm, uh, I think I did it. I think that's some kind of success. Now, just to, to prove it, I'll show here that uh, it's archived. I archived the folder. 
it is right well it's it's loading maybe you can see this is on the way back machine it's yeah now you can see it it's loading up so this is what the folder looked like um yeah i have actually i have the whole thing someone's asking if i got screenshots i have the whole thing downloaded i downloaded it multiple times so um yeah i mean i have i have everything and it's at least the most you know updated version i could get um yes thank you on facebook kate Sobolewski just uh um tweeted out the article that's a wise or, or tweeted out posted the article um so yeah I'm, <laughs> that just brings a grin to my face that that i just they've admitted that this is propaganda by by i mean if there was if they were you know proud of it and had nothing to hide and there was no scandal involved here well then they would have just left it open and there's nothing to say about it. But now, since they've been caught by a pesky journalist in Washington, D.C., sitting at his computer, well, it's been it's been busted. So um, I don't I'm not. All right. And in the comments, we got a score. Thank you. I don't want to just sit here and self congratulate and look like a jerk. But but that's kind of what I got to do, because this is just a live stream of of me and and my legions of commenters, but, um, well, so yeah, you can see, um, I, I hope this is visible enough. I know it's a little bit small. Maybe it's better to do it this way. I'm trying to figure out the best way to, uh, yeah, maybe that everyone can see a little bit better. It makes it a little bit better to, uh, if I'm smaller on the screen like that, it makes, makes things a little bit bigger. So, you know, you can see this this dossier is essentially what it was. It's just a Google a Google Drive folder. Um, here you can see on the left it says key messages. Then it says correct wording. That's one of the other key ones. Um, then you know it's verified and official sources. And then there's also this International Legion of Defense folder, which gives instructions on if you want to go be a foreign fighter in Ukraine, how to do that. Um, but I mean, you know, just the most remarkable thing to me was actually in this visuals um, folder, which I don't know if that will, I don't know if that will open up, but I have it all downloaded, but the, the, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of graphics that, um, it's official Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs propaganda. And much of it is, uh, it basically promotes these debunked um, video, these debunked propaganda constructs about, for example, the ghost of Kiev, which was this claim that there's a Ukrainian fighter pilot that's just taking out all of these Russian warplanes one after the other and, and is, you know, just legendary. Um, and then it turns out that the footage that was going around of that was a video game. So there was no ghost of Kiev. Then there was the Snake Island incident in which uh, a, Ro a Russian warship that approached um, an island, a small Ukrainian island, where there were border guards, like 13 border guards stationed, and the Russian warship told them to surrender. And uh, the Ukrainian border guards supposedly, allegedly, told the Russian warship to go F itself, and then the Russian warship killed them. And the uh, president of Ukraine, Zelensky, gave these, they, he did a big press conference, gave these guys the um, uh, big medal, like Medal of Honor, Hero of Ukraine, something like that. Then it turns out that actually that was all fake too, and they were alive and they surrendered, um, and they were perfectly fine. So that was another lie. But these, so in these memes, which... If we go back to my Mint Press article, we'll go through some of them. Oh, so here's so so here's firstly one of the videos they promoted uh, showing the um, the Snake Island incident. So you know they have a whole video about it. I'm not gonna you know show the whole thing, but you know you can see very dramatic music. Here's the island, Zmini Island. Okay, and here's here's a supposed audio. So clearly they faked this audio. They edited it to, you know, make it sound like 
you know, this brave stand, but obviously it was not. It was faked. And then here's Zelensky's, Zelensky's press conference. Okay, so then we get to some of the um, the memes or the, the the graphics that they put out. So here's one. I wish I can make this. Let's see if I can make this a little bit smaller so everyone can see it work. I think so. By the way, um, anyone who wants to throw a super chat in there, I mean, I, I try to check out the comments as much as I can, um, but obviously very much appreciate super chats and I'll be sure to read your comment out loud. But um, okay, so we have, first we have, this is, they're not in any particular order. I love Enlaw. It's one of the, one of the graphics that came up with Enlaw is uh, the, um, light anti-tank weapons that uh, the U.S. has been and U.K. and basically Western Europe has been shipping to the Ukrainians. Next generation light anti-tank weapon. I love those. This one uh, contains um, in Ukrainian. So we have a an, um, this is implying that they're fertilizing the field with with bodies, and it says Grandma's advice to Moscovites, which is a a derogatory xenophobic term used for Russians um, that's popular among Ukrainian nationalists, fascists. Hide in the fields where you die in the hands of our army. Sunflowers will grow better. Here we have ritual services. This is the one that editors put on the cover of the article, just a truck with the Ukrainians waving a peace flag and then a bunch of dead Russians in the back. Pretty grim. Democracy is a weapon. I think this one is kind of revealing because the u.s sees and it's and its proxies see democracy as a weapon it's not actual democracy it's their brand of democracy here's and here's where uh the fascism really starts to come out here we have thank you ukrainian army and then if you look here on the patch on his sleeve that is the azov battalion and a wolf's angle the fascist neo-nazi um, what was a paramilitary that was incorporated into the Ukrainian National Guard and is now officially part of it. Um, here's a here's a, a book, the Encyclopedia of Incur Incurable Diseases. So this is basic, basically a, a list of countries. It's like the U.S. hit list for regime change. Russia, Belarus, North Korea, Syria, Eritrea. Okay, so more Moscovian occupation. occupation. This one... The mental Moscovian dragon is not changeable. This is going all the way back. Putin, uh, Stalin, Lenin, and Tsar Nicholas, all as if they're, you know, one empire, not, you know, completely basically different governments um, and, and systems went from, you know, czarism to communism to, um, to capitalism, as Russia currently is. Um, here we have the Bandera smoothie. If you don't know who... Uh, Stepan Bandera is. He was a Nazi collaborator during World War II who um, oversaw the murder of tens of thousands of maybe maybe even hundreds of thousands of, of Jews, uh, ethnic Poles. Um, so, you know, basically their own little their own little Hitler. And so he's been rehabilitated in post um, post Maidan Ukraine, but even before going back to 2010 when. Yukishenko, the U.S.-backed president, uh, um, awarded um, Bandera the hero of, of Ukraine. Here we have Death to the Enemies. This is the red and black flag, which is now used by right sector, the neo-Nazi paramilitary. Um, and it is, I mean, you know, it's, this is red and black for blood and soil. So everyone who knows anything about neo-Nazis should know that, you know, what blood and soil means. This is a really disturbing graphic. NATO closed the sky. I mean, that's, I don't think, I don't even think, it, you know, they're in, I don't know. It's kind of revealing. Um, let me just check out. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Lumpia logic para character, cheerfully blowing a party horn. Oh, um, thank you for that. Let me just scroll up a little bit, check everything out. All right. And then it, it gets very juvenile here. We have a uh, Putin's face made of many male genitalias um you know you can you can go through these and take a look at them yourselves and there's many more if you actually um maybe i'll maybe i will upload the the whole 
the whole drive and everyone can take a look because I'm not sure how accessible the the Wayback version is. But uh, more right sector flag, we have Ukraine or Valhalla, which is a reference to um, neo-Nazis basically appropriate North Norse mythology. So they think, you know, you go to Valhalla after you after you die, it's some paradise. Um, this is the, the, the opera house, I guess, in Kharkiv that was headquarters of Azov battalion that the Russians bombed. And so, uh, you know, so they're of course very opposed to that, just more very juvenile stuff here. So this one's pretty creepy Russian welcome to hell. And then this one is, is really crazy. This one, uh, with this face is praising, uh, Yevon Karas, the C-14 neo-Nazi leader um in ukraine so you know it's all this is explicitly clearly nazi propaganda on the ukrainian ministry of foreign affairs <clears throat> website and i caught it and now they've disappeared it so i'm gonna have a sip to that it's just water i mean i guess you're not supposed to cheers with water but i'm parched um and then what else we have uh we have Zelensky portrayed as some kind of king, I guess, with a cross on his head, even though he's he's Jewish. Um, more juvenile stuff. Okay, you know, we've gone through the memes that I... I mean, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of these that I went through, and these are just the ones I selected for the article. But, I mean, what I, I want to kind of get into what this propaganda operation really is. So, I found this on the site PR Week. It's run by, um, this whole operation is run by this guy, Yaroslav Tur Turbil, who works at the Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, he's a global communications guy. He used to work for Internews, which is a, which, you know, I show here is a, uh, it's a CIA cutout. It's basically um, a U.S. Uh, news organization that operates around the world. Um, and then there are, Something like, so they say 150 PR organizations, not only in Ukraine, but in the UK, in the US, throughout the West, basically, who are promoting this propaganda, um, who are taking this key messaging and put, you know, who knows where exactly it's going. But when you have 150 PR firms, including the top PR man in the UK and basically one of the top PR figures in the world, his name is Francis Ingham. He is uh, he is a key figure in this. And so you have this PR guy who worked for the UK government. He worked for the Tories. He's very involved with the UK government now. He's the guy promoting this internationally. He's the kind of conduit outside. So you have to wonder what outlets is, the, is this going to? And that's something that I, you know, I wasn't able to uncover, but it's pretty obvious where you see all of these um, these propaganda constructs appearing. If you turn on any news channel in the U.S. or if you you know read the New York Times or any of these, it's all appearing in there. All of these propaganda constructs are. So um, then one of things, one, you know, one of the aspects of this that I discovered, let me go further down into the piece. Well, so we have this part where they're, they're calling on people to enlist. Um, we have the key messages, of course, but there's a, let me see if I can find, ah, so we have the media outlets that they are, that, that um, basically one of these articles says that, you know, we should read and I go through them and I show that these are so-called independent media and they're not independent at all. They're basically mostly, most of them are funded by either the National Endowment for Democracy or some kind of cutout of it. It's all basically CIA cutouts. I assume pretty much all of my listeners probably know what the National um, Endowment for Democracy is. It's a found, it was founded in the 80s to do what the CIA used to do, because basically after the dirty wars of Latin America, um, the CIA had gotten kind of a dirty, dirty, had dirtied its name. And so they got rid of the, the cloak and dagger, so to speak, and decided we'll just do things in the public and the public eye and call it democracy promotion. And so that's what that's what this stuff is. Um, so I am just checking out. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you from VM. Appreciate the tip from Malene A. Thank you. Um, and yes, I'm going to have Alex Rubenstein joining a little bit. 
uh, to talk about his reporting. But I just want to kind of go through this. So you have basically all of these media outlets that are CIA cutouts. You know, you have BBC, which is obviously government, um, British government um, media. You have some of them promoting, you know, ex- explicitly genocidal rhetoric, um, which let me see if I can find it. I uh, don't know where it is. But, oh no, it's, sorry, it's right here. We have, uh, this is, this is one of the media outlets they promote is, well, I'll just, I'll just pull it up here. Everyone can see that, right? Okay. This is from, I don't know how you say this, Rom, Romadsk, Romadsky. This is, a uh, a Romadsky analyst calling for genocide in the Donbass. Um, and so this is funded by the National Endowment for Democracy and uh, a series of cutouts. And also Pierre Omidyar's um, Omidyar found, Foundation. So watch this. Так може бути тому, що Донбас взагалі регіон, який, ну, це не просто депресивний регіон, розумієте? Там настільки великий комплекс таких грона проблем. І головніше, наприклад, тому, що там просто дика кількість абсолютно непотрібних людей. Ви економ... Повірте, я абсолютно свідомо про це говорю. От якщо брати навіть чисто Донецьку область, там приблизно 4 мільйони населення. Що не менше мільйона півтора, там просто зайвих людей. Прошу хочу сказати, нам не треба розуміти Донбас, нам треба розуміти взагалі український національний інтерес. А Донбас треба просто використати як ресурс. Які треба відповідно з приводу розуміння Донбасу. Мені здається, що ну в мене нема зрозуміння жодного рецепту, що тут можна зробити швидко. Але ем, найголовніше, що треба зробити е, в даний момент, е, як це там жорстоко не призвучить, є певне є певна категорія людей, яких треба просто вбити. От ви спитали, як so there it is. We have him straight up calling for extermination. Um, you know. What what can you say about that? Just genocidal genocidal incitement, but uh, um, you know, in addition to all this Nazi propaganda. So let's go back to the let's go back to the article, um, and then we have so so behind so behind this this whole you know Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs propaganda dossier, we have all these CIA cutout uh, media operations creating the content. You know, they're kind of running parallel. Then we have a bunch of Washington, D.C. lobbyists, um, which really says a lot. I mean, if you, anybody who has watched Zelensky, it's pretty obvious, you know, I mean, if you, if, if you, if you look at his, uh, his arc of his career, he went, he's a longtime comedian and actor, and he was on a TV show um, where he played a, a kind of upstart president a guy who you know basically got thrust in the role of president to battle corruption and then that was immediately transformed into an a into reality where he became a candidate um for the actual presidency in ukraine um as i guess poroshenko was you know becoming too sullied his image was becoming too sullied and so um so zelensky you know is basically being told what to say it's very clear and i show this in the article so we have basically um, his his speech to Congress last week was, you know, it was very cringeworthy. If anyone watched it, he invoked Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech to call for uh, a no-fly zone over Ukraine. He said, I have a need. You have a dream. I have a need. Um, so for, for mushroom clouds over over Ukraine. And that was advised, I show in this article. I mean, this is kind of a, you know, something that people haven't picked up on in the article because I just put so much information in here. Um, If you look, it says, here's, let me just find the, the bit. Okay, so we have Andrew Mack is one of the lobbyists who... Uh, he's a he's a he's a registered foreign agent. He's a lobbyist for the Ukrainian government, and he is writing Zelensky's speech to Congress. He's one of the figures who wrote Zelensky's speech to Congress. Okay, the other guy is Daniel. I don't know if I'm saying this right, Vajdik or Vajdich, um, who also helped write his speech in Congress, in which he quoted Martin Luther King Jr. So then you have UN General Assembly. Um, a few weeks ago, on the, on the eve of the Russian counteroffensive, you can call it, the UN um, permanent, the Ukrainian permanent representative to the UN, 
uh, Sergei Kislitsa. I don't know if I'm saying his, his name right. Sergei Kislitsa. Uh, his speech was written by DC lobbying firm SKD Knickerbocker Managing Director Stephen Krupen, a former speechwriter to Barack Obama, who worked extensively on Biden's 2020 campaign. So these Ukrainian government figures are, there's nothing genuine about them. They are basically being told what to say by lobbyists here in Washington, you know, who work um, on behalf of major business interests, um, you know, which, which is totally obvious to anyone involved, uh, to anyone who's watching, but I, I prove it here. I found, you know, I found the information. Um, and then you also have Michael McFall, the former U.S. ambassador to Russia, playing a, a very key part um, in in basically, you know, connecting, advising, um, advising Zelensky in what he says and how to talk to uh, Congress. And also they connected Zelensky and different uh, Ukrainian government officials with mayors and uh, local officials around the U.S., like Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot. Um, so this is a, it's a very, it's a very multifaceted kind of complex propaganda operation. Um, but you know, I hope everybody checks out that article. I mean, those are just kind of a, a brief overview of it. Um, and then there's actually a second propaganda operation that I just uncovered a few minutes ago, about an hour ago. So I just want to kind of go through it and, I think it'll be really interesting for everyone. So I was, I might end up writing an article on this. I thought about just writing an article instead of just un unveiling it here, but um, everything is happening so fast. It feels like there's a, you know, a new psyop every day. Um, and I, you know, I just, it's hard to stay up with it all. So sometimes the easiest way is to live stream. Um, so I came across this, let's see, oh, this one, shared this tab instead. This is a another sort of dossier called Fighting Putin's Propaganda Narrative Response Toolkit, okay, written by Lynn PR. Okay, so what is this thing? The Misinformation Cell. So can everyone see this? Yeah, okay. President Putin is waging two wars, which are mutually reinforcing. This is something called the misinformation cell. They wrote the misinformation cell, and they created it to counter Putin's propaganda. The counter-narrative campaign development, CONAC. It has very milit militaristic uh, acronyms. And this is written by Stefan Rolnick, head of misinformation cell at Lin PR. Okay, before we get into it, let's take a look at what Lin PR and who Stefan Rolnick are. And this is, you know, this is about 10 minutes of um, research I did. Okay, Lin PR, it's clients. Okay, so we have Office of the Public Guardian. We have basically a bunch of UK government uh, organizations is what it, that's what it looks like. Um, so this is public sector and private sector as well. So I don't know who, who most of these are, but, you know, Office of the Public Guardian, we have Department for Education. This is all apparently UK. Um, so let me just get everything, make sure I'm, do not disturb is on. Okay, there we go. Um, so that's who, that's who this, this group Lynn PR is. Okay. Um, Oh, wait, you can't see it. Sorry. Okay. So here we go. Now you can see, and everyone can see that I'm looking at, this is the clients for Lynn PR who wrote this other propaganda guide, language guide. Um, and so it's clients, as you can see, our Office of the Public Guardian, for example, Department for Education. Um so it's UK government, right? Then we have the author. Who is the author? Well, I shared this. Said we have Stefan Rolnick. This guy's head of misinformation cell at Lynn PR. Okay, formerly of Imperial College London. Now, if you if you were 
been if you followed the kind of covid disinformation uh effort the original projections that basically the uk government the us government used in order to justify lockdowns that destroyed that imploded uh economies that those were from imperial college that said you know if we don't lock down there will be millions and millions of deaths and it turns out that lockdowns did nothing to stop the spread but actually killed huge amounts of people and destroyed many livelihoods so it's interesting to see that he came from imperial college london I'm not saying there's that he was part of that um but actually if you look at his articles here these got featured he has Google profits from anti-vaxxers. Anti-vaxxers being the McCarthyite uh, term de jour for you know anyone who questions uh, anything about the the COVID regime that was installed. Um, then you have him with Peter Pomerantsev on the war against reality. Well, Peter Pomerantsev was part of um, the Integrity Initiative, which was a UK intelligence operation that was discovered in 2018, I believe. Um, that spanned Europe. It was across Europe and the United States. And it was a series of academics, uh, journalists, um, government officials, propagandists, who were all doing this clandestine um, uh, operation to basically attack the anti-war left and just keep um, the US and Europe on a uh, on kind of an anti-Russia, very aggressive footing. And so Peter Pomerantsev was part of that. And here he is um, interviewing Peter Pomerantsev. Uh, Stefan Rolnick speaks to Pom Peter Pomerantsev on the War Against Reality on Progressive Britain podcast. So these spooks, you know, tried to place themselves within the left. Um, okay, so... And then he says the far right in the UK are using Putin, Putin's propaganda war for their own hateful and unpatriotic ends. Well, I just uncovered a whole bunch of Nazi propaganda uh, in Ukrainian, you know, in 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 Ukraine's Ministry of Foreign Official Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So I don't know uh, what he's talking about. You know, he seems to have an interesting focus on the far right in the UK, but at the same time is perfectly happy um, with Nazi propaganda uh, from the Ukrainian government. Um, so here we go. Prior to being the head of misinformation cell at Lynn PR, Stefan Rolnick was a digital misinformation analyst for the Welsh government. Did that for several months. Okay, interesting. This was during the pandemic, of course. So um, then he was part of the Center for Countering Digital Hate. Uh, again, no problem with Ukrainian, Ukrainian Nazi hate. And he was in working in the Labour Party. Someone who knows British politics, uh, UK politics would have to explain progressive Britain. I don't I don't I don't know uh, the ins and outs, but um oh someone's complaining about the tiny text. Uh it's the I think the best I can do. I'm just explaining it the best. Okay. So that's who this this guy is. So he's basically it's spooky worked with chat chatham house i mean that's another intern at the bbc so you know all these basically uh disinformation operations that are um run by the uk and us and are basically cia cutouts now let's take a look at the report itself okay scrolling down so building our armory to fight putin's propaganda war um it's a call to action. Crowdsourcing intel. Our content recommendations. Okay. Very serious. Displays of solidarity with Ukraine. Okay. That doesn't... See, this whole thing about countering propaganda and countering misinformation and disinformation, well, they don't actually debunk anything. They don't challenge any facts. They just want to come up with something else. They want memes and content, which ridicule President Putin by appearing, making him appear weak and isolated. That's propaganda. I mean, it's it has no relation to reality, whether it's true or not. Um, memes and content, which emphasize Zelensky's strength, resilience and connection with regular people in contrast to Putin, who's out of touch. OK, I mean, this is uh, 
content that exposes Russia's kleptocracy and the extreme unfairness of inequality over which Putin presides. What about here in the U.S.? What about here in the U.K.? I mean, we have extreme inequality. And of course, that exists in Russia as a result of the U.S. basically dissolving the Soviet Union. But we'll never hear anyone talk. You know, we hear about Russian oligarchs all the time. If you look up the dictionary definition of oligarch on Google, let's look it up. I'll show you something. Okay, share this tab instead. Can everyone see this? Oligarch, a ruler in, in an oligarchy, especially in Russia. This is the definition on, uh, on Google. Okay, so they want the oligarchs in the U.S., which are much more powerful than the oligarchs in Russia, want us to think that their oligarchs are bad. Ours are good. They give us jobs. They take care of us. Okay. So talk about talk about inequality in in over which Putin presides in Russia, but not here in the U.S. All right. Then we have propaganda response toolkit. This is a little bit strange and hard. And okay, so if you see someone talking about U.S. aggression or Palestine or NATO, NATO enlargement or Donbass, where the Ukraine, where Ukraine has been waging war, or uh, Zelensky in the far right, or Gen Han Spie who is Gen Han Spiedel? Well, let's let's talk about that. Oh, Gen General Han Spiedel, I think is what it is. Okay. He was a German general who was part of uh, Nazi Germany, and then he was integrated into West Germany. He escaped from a Nazi prison, and let's see, we can pull him up. Let's pull up old Hans Spiegel. Share this tab instead. Okay, yes, this is the guy that... Um, when, when you talk about this guy, the fact that it was a German general and a, a big Nazi um, and served as chief of staff to Field Marshal Erwin Rommel during the Second World War. Um, and he became a big uh, figure in West Germany. Okay. So don't, they don't want you to talk about that. Okay. So. If you talk about the fact that NATO was basically just rehabilitating Nazis, then okay, then you have uh, Ukraine is committing atrocities, and that's and that's a vulnerability. There is far right presence in Ukraine, but with the counter narrative, what Lynn PR is instructing them to say is Ukraine is fighting for democracy. Okay, and to do that, you can use follow the lines here, everyday hero stories, or joyful content. So to counter the fact that there are Nazis in that that NATO is basically rebranded Nazis, talk about everyday hero stories and joyful content. That's nice. Okay. Um, how about uh, Steven Steven Seagal? That's hilarious. Um, anyway, I think I mean I think that's a pretty pretty good example. Um, <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. Okay. The <laughs> On Palestine, the West support of Ukrainian self-defense, but lack of support for Palestine demonstrates anti-Russia bias and evidence of hypocrisy. Oh no, that's true. So what do we say there? It is a, it is hypocritical. Okay, so the core narrative surrounding that, Russia is a liberator. U.S. has hawkish history. Yes, the U.S. doesn't just have a hawkish history. The U.S. is hawkish. Okay, and so the counter narrative is David versus Goliath, that David is... Ukraine and Goliath is Russia. And to show that, we go back to everyday hero stories, Russian barbarism and kleptocracy. So that's how this it's 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 kind of asinine these things, but um you know that's that's what this is how desperate they are. Um so we'll go down a little more. I don't want to spend too much time in here, but it's but it is you know, pretty fascinating. Okay, and they actually give examples of people of of uh, what the information they don't like. Um, so let's see. One of them is the 
Ukrainian government. Okay, telephone call with Prime Minister of India, Naren, Narendra Modi. Okay, so that is... All right, let's go back there. Okay, I don't know exactly what that is. Let's see. As you can, as everyone can kind of get a sense of, this is all just very much on the fly. Okay, so they they give an example of Sam Husseini, my friend Sam Husseini. I guess you know this is showing how NATO, how the U.S. lied to um, <laughs> to Russia about NATO's expansion. Oh, we don't want to talk about that. So let's pivot to something else. That's that's how this propaganda works. Okay, they have something from uh, Off Guardian. Let's see what this is. Okay, sure. This is to all the Zelensky's a Jew crap spread. Seeking to appoint far right. Yes, exactly. Okay. When people say Zelensky is a Jew, so how can there be Nazis? Well, it turns out Zelensky is seeking to appoint far right Serhii Sternenko as head of Ukraine's security service in Odessa, an attempt to further his alliance with neo Nazi forces, which he does have. Uh, that is true. Okay. What else? What else do we have here? I mean, you get the idea. Let's see. what it, This is from... The... Okay. So, you get... You know, it's... it's. I mean, the fact... What's interesting to me about this is they're clearly very concerned about what is being said on Twitter. Um, and, you know, well, it might feel like you're shouting into a hole or something or that it's doesn't really matter clearly these narrative managers these propagandists um are watching it so where is this sourced from here's the best part the misinformation cell misinformation cells research was enhanced by the tireless efforts of fact checkers dedicated organizations across the world special thanks to cheyenne sarza Sir de Rizade, sorry for butchering that, though not really sorry, and the Atlantic Council's Digital Forensic Lab. If anyone knows anything about the Atlantic Council, it is a NATO think tank, funded by NATO, funded by weapons companies, oil companies. So this is NATO propaganda, laundered as PR and presented to whoever uh, in, the, in media, in PR, in the general public is how to counter Russian propaganda. So if they point out that the U S and UK are hypocritical for supporting the subjugation and occupation of Palestinians, well then just point to some other thing. Uh, if you point out that NATO is filled with Nazis, uh, just point to some other thing that Ukrainians are, I don't know, peace loving people, or just say something else to counter Putin's malign propaganda. Um, so that's, you know, I mean, this is just, it's it seems to be there are so many of these um, kind of propaganda constructs going around. Every day there's something else. Um, so I, you know, want to, uh, so I, I feel like, you know, it's, I could continue to hit these every day, it seems like, um, but um, it's, uh, you know, it's, I could write an article every day, but there's just, there's just so much of it. So now I'm going to, hang on one second, we're going to continue this, uh, debunking propaganda and let's see. We're gonna bring in we're gonna bring in our guest, Alex Rubenstein. Thank you, MR thirteen FNG. I don't know if anyone else did a super chat that I missed, but thank you. Appreciate it. And uh Okay, so we've covered a lot of this Ukrainian propaganda in a kind of haphazard way. You can tell I'm not extremely prepared today just because I've been doing so much. But um, all of this 
propaganda is to obviously build Western support in the public and in the um, in in the public and in private. So um, among government offic- government officials, uh, among the public, you know, we want they basically want this huge support from the West, which you see all over. If you drive around Washington, D.C., you have Ukrainian flags. I was just uh, downtown and some guy came up to me. He's, he, you know, sir, do you have a minute to, to sign something or you want to donate money? And is, is this about Ukraine? Yes, of course. OK, so there's just an incredible propaganda drive. If you use Airbnb or Google, you get um, um, notifications. Do you want to support Ukraine? So, I mean, you, you know, if you just compare this to any war that the U.S. Has been, is involved in, whether Yemen, Palestine, Iraq, Afghanistan, well, um, you know, if you talk about those, you will be banished. Um, you know, if you expose war crimes like Julian Assange did, you'll be locked in a uh, in a prison cell and um, until you wither away and and you know they hope you die. So, um, so point is, this is all about drumming up support in the West for prolonged conflict. So um, Alex Rubenstein just did a really good piece in the gray zone. I'm going to bring him in right now. Hey, Alex. Hey, man. How you doing? Pretty good. Thanks. Uh, Great thanks. stream so far. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to trying to hold it down here. Um, <laughs> but I guess some, some people are, are watching and appreciating it despite my, my tendency to babble. Um, so, yeah, but I think, you know, this is, it's all of this, you know, what I, what I've been showing with my investigations in terms of the propaganda to drive support for war kind of leads right into what you showed in your investigation, which uh, I'll put on screen right now. Um, well, it's, you know, it's funny just to reflect on the past years, Dan, and how much mine and your work has kind of supplemented each other, you know, whether right. it was Hong Kong or uh, a lot of different, you know, uh, regime change scenarios and imp- imperialist intrigues that we've exposed kind of side by side. This is this, right. This being the latest. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's uh, I think in the corporate world, they call that synergy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so let's see, maybe I'll try this picture and picture thing. Yeah. So then, you know, people can look at your, your article. Um, they can see it, but everyone check this out. It's at the gray zone. It's called U S and NATO allies arm neo-Nazi units in Ukraine as foreign policy elites yearn for Afghan style insurgency. Um, so he, um, Alex published this a few days ago. And so, so Alex just kind of, you know, break down exactly what, what's going on tell tell people you know what your piece is about what you document here yeah so the piece is kind of an overview of uh of the western campaign to basically prepare ukraine for for an insurgency against russia which dates back to the uh immediate aftermath of the 2014 coup and the war in donbass that broke out uh shortly afterwards um and i you know i give all the all the facts really of of that campaign um of the arming this year which has been one of the largest and the fastest arms transfers in human history uh but not only that but the uh the years-long campaign by the united kingdom and britain i'm sorry and and canada uh as well as the united states uh to train ukrainian forces uh oftentimes neo-nazis um so I document the the history of trainings with Azov Battalion, uh, sixty six thousand Ukrainian forces trained by Canada and the UK alone, and then on top of the regular military training by the United States, there's a secret CIA program where Azov people were, I'm sorry, uh, Ukrainians were flown over to uh, an undisclosed location in the U.S. to uh, get training from the CIA. Um, and it's really not clear whether Azov was involved because uh, there's no there's no ideological vetting that's gone on in any of this. Uh, it's it's all um, 
basically if you haven't committed a war crime you're good to go but you could be you could have a swastika tattoo they they don't care um that's not going to get you uh vetted out right um so i document the arms transfers i document uh the history of collaboration with these neo-nazi forces and i juxtapose all that with um kind of breadcrumbs that have been dropped by foreign policy elites in the u.s about making this a protracted war um in the style of afghanistan where the u.s through operation cyclone armed and trained the afghan mujahideen with billions of dollars um eventually you know the, the mujahideen eventually becoming the uh taliban and al-qaeda i also draw comparisons to syria much like hillary clinton Let's did go ahead let me let me interrupt you. Let's take a look at some of before we get into the uh, the Afghanistan parallel, which is yeah explicit as you said. I want to just look at you know I want people to get a get an understanding of how much U.S. and NATO have poured into this. Let me uh, bring your article back up. Okay, so this section NATO states pour weapons into Ukraine to ratchet up the violence. At least thirty two countries have sent. Uh, direct mili military aid to Ukraine just this year. This is only this yeah. year. And this has been going on for several years. Um, so Australia, you got $50 million. Austria, $19 million in non-lethal aid. Okay. You can, but so this is, you know, general it's military, military aid. Yeah. I didn't include yeah. humanitarian aid or uh, a lot of, a right. lot of countries gave loans. I didn't include that. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Right. Which, uh, which, I mean, that's actually an, an interesting aspect. It is. Um, Belgium sending sent three thousand machine guns, two hundred anti tank weapons. Uh, I mean Canada, a whole bunch, you know, yeah. a whole bunch of a, a whole bunch of weapons. Um, hundred Carl Gustav anti tank weapons, two thousand rockets, forty five hundred M seventy two rocket launchers, hand grenades, sniper rifle. I mean this this list it goes, on, goes and on. on and yeah. on and on and on. Um. Germany. And Nor Norway is an interesting one because, you know, like Germany and Sweden, uh, they used to be neutral countries. They had explicit bans since World War II uh, of of supplying countries at war with weapons um, that those policies were reversed. And, and Norway said themselves, uh, oh, here you have it, Defense Minister Odd Roger. <laughs> that's that's an interesting name, Odd Roger. I feel like it's a nickname. Enochson, I don't know if that's right, uh, said that, you know, he can't guarantee that the weapons won't fall into the wrong hands. Um, wow. If the Azov battalion is the is the right hands, I don't even want to know what the wrong hands right. are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, it, 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 it's kind of interesting because it goes back to that uh, Ukrainian government meme that you shared earlier in the stream from your article where uh, it was like, we heart in laws. Um, in this article, I published uh, photographs of um, the Azov Battalion being trained by uh, apparently Brits in the use of N-laws. Um, at the time, it was 3,000 and change N-laws sent from, uh, from the UK, but uh, there was that prank call that was made to the defense minister of the UK that was published a couple of days ago. And in that call, he claimed it was more than 4,000. So they're still sending hundreds and hundreds of, of anti-tank weapons. And again, right. they're going to Azov. As, right, right. Actually, Azov uh, said themselves, I, I went to their Telegram channel, and they said that they were mastering the end law to uh, send Russia to hell. Yeah, right, right. So, yeah, they're getting this quick training on, uh, you know, how to shoot a, a next-generation light anti-tank weapon. Right. Um, so if you're from know, the UK, you can be proud of where your tax dollars are going, right? And where uh, and where these N laws might end up when you know when this all winds down. And and I mean that's one of the craziest aspects to me is, um, you know, with sending all these, in particular the anti aircraft, the man pads that they've sent. I mean, there was a lot of hesitation about sending that sending you know that kind of weaponry into war zones because well then where does it go you know we saw yeah. in syria who, who ends who ends up with these things um and you know that gives in the case of ukraine nazis the power to target airliners um you know to target any kind of civilian aircraft you know military or civilian um and so you know there's no tracing there's no you know once these things are out there they're out there and 
So that creates an extremely serious threat uh, for, you know, for civilians, um, you know, in, in Europe, in, you know, wherever, wherever these things may travel to and, you know, whatever the next kind of theater of conflict that the U S creates, maybe we'll see those weapons there. Yeah. Um, so, well, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, Obama, who's, you know, state department really, uh, started this mess by, uh, supporting the, the coup in Kiev, uh, in 2014 and, Biden, of course, being a leading figure in that effort, um, even Obama didn't want to send lethal aid to Ukraine. I mean, presumably for this right. reason, it wasn't until Trump uh, became president that the U.S. reversed its policy of refusing lethal aid. And uh, and now that Biden's in office, he's just blown Trump's dollar figures in terms of lethal aid out, out of the water. Right, 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 right. I'm actually trying to find... Uh seeing if I can find this op-ed from Anthony Blinken in, I think, like 2018, where he was saying uh, Trump should send lethal aid to Ukraine. Um, so, I mean... Well, this is, what the, uh, this is what the neo-Nazis in the State Department have in common, is they're getting what they wanted, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, it's, there's, it's just like, it seems like it's buried under so many articles in google here so many other things but um let's see let me see if i can pull it up real quick lethal aid no it's just buried i can't find it so easily um but yeah i mean exactly the the obama administration you know was kind of hesitant and, and did not send uh did not send lethal aid they called it non-lethal aid and then yeah and then finally trump said sent lethal aid. i mean i just like the it's such a kind of the propagandistic term lethal aid yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh i don't know it's it's just it's a nice it's a very very nice name for deadly weapons um right yeah and you know in my article of uh you know where i put all this military equipment i i included both lethal and non-lethal because you know as i showed the point is to prolong the war to like chip away at you know the russian economy russian morale uh the russian military um, and so like even something which is like more more defensive in nature, like, you know, chest plates and helmets, all that goes towards continuing the war. You know, right. Exactly. Exactly. It's all for the same thing. And I mean, right. you know, that's one of the the big arguments that you've seen in Congress um, and, you know, the demands, the requests, demands that you've seen from the Ukrainians is, well, we want MiGs from Poland. They right. want uh, aircraft. And so far, the Biden administration has resisted that, had, has, has said, well, we don't want to escalate to that level. Um, and so there are kind of, you know, lines where the U.S., at least the Biden administration, does not want to cross, though these ideologues in the State Department and their counterparts in the Ukrainian government um, and, you know, basically the, the ultra nationalists and fascists running it, um, you know, are united with the State Department and seem to be kind of against the Biden administration in that way and, and trying to push for for transfer of more serious, serious, you know, firepower and in particular MiGs. What's really funny is this actually didn't make it in my article. Um, Zelensky in his speech to Congress asked for S-300s, which is a Russian made air defense system. So it was just hilarious that he was asking. I mean, it kind of shows his ignorance. I think that he was asking U.S. Congress to send Russian air defense systems. <laughs> right, right, Nicknamed right. the F-35 killer, no less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which uh, the F-35, I mean, the F-35 seem to be kind of killing themselves. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. Um, I mean, here's what we have from the U.S. Just this year, this is remarkable. February 26th, State Department announced $350 million in additional military aid to Ukraine. Oh, I took down. I, turned, I took down the article. Let me put it back up so people can see what I'm, what I'm reading off of. Um, yeah, there we go. So, 350 million. That brings in the past year more than one billion. I mean, a billion. You know, overall in the U.S. 
budget, a billion dollars, I guess is not a lot. But when you think about what a billion dollars could do for, I don't know, you know, my neighborhood in Washington, D.C., um, which is, you know, pretty decrepit. It's a, it's a huge amount of money. Um, and we're using it to basically just prolong war in Ukraine. And so so I guess, you know, one of the important points that that you make and one of the takeaways from your article is the U.S.'s goal isn't to win. It's to prolong the war. So so, you know, get into that and then we'll talk about the, you know, and then. Yeah, I mean, and and that's there's an obvious parallel with Afghanistan that you were talking about there. Yeah, I mean, even Hillary Clinton herself, who I mean, I, you know, I tend to listen to Hillary Clinton more than I listen to Anthony Blinken, right? Because Blinken is the head of the State Department. He's going to be more careful about what he says, whereas Hillary Clinton, who's still very much a leading figure in the Democratic foreign policy establishment, uh, has more leeway to speak openly about uh, the the U.S. agenda. Um, So, I mean, she's been going on cable news and dropping hints about making this uh i mean I, let me pull up my article so i can get the quotes but um she's been dropping hints about turning this into an afghan style insurgency uh in fact it's hilarious because uh in a in a uh subsequent interview she did after uh she talked about um about how afghanistan was apparently so successful in beating back the soviets uh she went on uh msnbc to talk with mika brzezinski the daughter of i got it can you see it on screen i got it pulled up no Uh, it's not up but that i mean we can oh that's because i got you full screen yeah nobody wants to look at that (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean this is this is like fantastic uh i mean not to mention that you know the taliban was flown over to washington dc to negotiate an oil deal by her husband bill clinton um, shortly after uh, this apparent success in the 80s. Um, but, uh, you know, she says she says that this is the model that people are looking towards, right? And so when she's talking about people, she's talking about, you know, the State Department and, and NATO. Um, and then, you know, she goes on MSNBC with Mika Brzezinski, uh, who is the daughter of uh, the architect of Operation Cyclone. How do you even say his first name? Z-Big? I think it's... I mean, I think Z-Big is yeah. like what uh, what people call him when he plays basketball. But um, <laughs> uh, I think it's – I mean, I just know him as Z-Big New. Z-Big New. But, right. but I mean, I mean, I think – is he Pole? Yeah, he's Polish. Polish. Is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't – so, I, you know, I'm sure someone who has a native Polish tongue would probably say it a bit differently than you or I do. But I guess it's Z-Big New. So, uh, so, I mean, you know, this guy, Z-Big New, uh, you know, his goal was to – suck uh the soviet union into a conflict in the style of vietnam which you know it ultimately it was a it was successful in that in that strict objective uh what it did though was created a ton of blowback with al-qaeda and the taliban who you know we wasted trillions of dollars fighting in the subsequent years um you know al-qaeda who of course uh we supported in syria but before that uh blew up the world trade center um all that right yeah that was a thing not so long ago yeah it's it's this kind of on and off relationship with with al-qaeda that that the u that the u.s has they were like not on our side with the world trade center but then jake sullivan when he was an assistant to hillary clinton wrote that email that we saw that wikileaks published saying al-qaeda is on our side in syria so you know it's just all who knows where they're gonna be one day to the other i I think the term is frenemies right Right, right. Um, But actually, Jake Sullivan's an interesting character because he played a leading role in in organizing the post-coup government in Ukraine uh, in the in the leaked phone call between Victoria Newland and um, Jeff Pryat, something like that. Uh, Right. Ambassador at the time. Um, You know, they talk about uh, Sullivan coordinating with Biden and and the uh, the selected uh, the selected government. But um I forgot where we were going with this. We were talking about Hillary Clinton. Uh, actually, well, even more recently than my article, um, Neil Ferguson, he's like uh, a columnist in the UK. He he reported that, uh, you know, Ukraine, uh, U- UK government officials are uh, 
are see the best option in Ukraine as a long term conflict, not a win, but a long term conflict to bleed Russia. So, I mean, that confirms even further what I've been saying in this article. Right, right, exactly. And it's just the most cynical and sinister sort of uh, approach to me where it's like they they just want permanent war in, in Ukraine. I mean, they've already, you know, they basically in 2000, I mean, Ukraine was not in great shape before 2014. But if you look at what happened post Maidan, it became the poor man of Europe where yeah. young people were leaving the country because there's no future there, totally dependent on IMF loans. Um, in fact, maybe I can, I'll see if I can pull it up, but I had, you know, there's a great clip of Zelensky joking about, um, uh, being a, uh, let me let me see if I can pull the Banderite, this up. right? Uh, not that one, but um, let me let me. See. I don't know. I don't know if I can pull it. I don't want to make people wait wait so long. But there's a great clip of Zelensky. You know, joke. He basically made a really crass joke about um about Ukraine being here. It is okay. Actually, I can. I think I can play it. Let me see if I can download it quickly amazing the all right hold on i'm gonna pull up this clip here while, while you do that let me let me just uh pull up this quote from uh richard haas uh, the uh president of the council on foreign relations this is what he said during a podcast actually michael mcfall was in it too he says i think what you're hearing from all of us and it's a real mindset change we're talking about potentially a long war think about this less as a classic war Afghanistan went on for two decades. This could be another frozen struggle, and it could wax and wane, but this could be part of the new normal. Right, right, right. Okay, actually, I think I got it. Let me see. All right, so let's make us... Let's go full screen on that. Bingo. Man, this is amazing technology. So this is in... I think... Tw this is in 2016 um, at a comedy at some kind of <clears throat> festival in uh in i believe in latvia um and here zelensky then a comedy comedy guy a big comedy name in in ukraine and in russia um he makes some really crass joke about ukraine being uh dependent on foreign aid so i'll just let it play i i hope everyone can read the subtitles there Итак, что такое Украина и почему в нее сегодня выгодно выбрасывать свои деньги? Извините, вкладывать. Вы знаете, у нас абсолютно новый уровень экономики. Мы дошли до этого уровня. Этот уровень называется попрошайный честно. Все очень просто. Мы выпрашиваем экономические излишки рыночных экономик соседних стран. Схема обалденная, проверена цыганами. Мы просто ее попробовали в рамках геополитики и без гитар. Это не лохотрон, это никакая не финансовая пирамида очередная. Нет, все просто, объясню, такая схема. Вы даете нам свои деньги, мы их вам потом не возвращаем. Гарантия 100%. Пишем, 100% гарантия. Дальше. Эта схема тут подойдет лучше всего схема а, деньги, товар, деньги. То есть вы даете нам деньги, потом товар, потом опять деньги. Да. Все достаточно просто. Дорогие друзья, теперь что касается уровня жизни в Украине. Я нарисую график. Итак, внимание. Итак, ось Y, ось Y это доходы украинцев. Обратите внимание, какой уровень у нас. Дальше, теперь уровень жизни. Посмотрите. Как он динамично у нас развивается. Стремительно растет. А, кое-что я забыл. Вот, ось X, вот. Вы знаете, вообще-то кредитование, что касается кредитования, то Украина, если честно, между нами напоминает актрису из немецких фильмов для взрослых. То есть э, готова принять в любом количестве с любой стороны. Если вам не жалко. Да, вас интересует, как же, как, как вы будете давать нам деньги. Я уже подготовил график. Все очень просто. Вот, вот. 20.00 кредит, 20.15 банкет, 20.30 по домам. Спасибо. 
Наверняка вас интересует вопрос, а куда потом пойдут ваши деньги? Я считаю, что это не этичный вопрос. Ведь задаемся мы вопросом, куда пойдет накормленный нами котик. Нет, радость от участия, вот самое главное. Украина это не просто страна, это часть европейского братства. А так бывает в семьях, когда один брат хороший, а второй стал алкоголиком. Да, так бывает, выносит из дому вещи. Но подождите, латыши, сегодня на этом месте мы, а завтра вполне возможно вы. Хотя, скорее всего, снова мы. So, that's, that's an uh, clip. Итак, что такое Украина и почему? I just accidentally played it again. Let's turn it off. Yeah, right, exactly. So, I mean, that's, I mean, there, you know, there's kind of a, a few things to unpack there. One, um, I mean, the main thing is he compares Ukraine, post-Maidan Ukraine, to a, a German porn star, which is not only incredibly, you know, offensive and disgusting, but then he goes on to become president and basically act as what a pimp he's acting as like a as like a yeah as like a guy who I think who, that's a know, fair put, analogy right um and so that's you know that's exactly what he's doing so he's you know pimping out his country um so basically the rest of europe and the west can exploit it to you know steal whatever wealth there is and uh and try to bleed russia um you know in addition to of course is uh you know racist comments about about roma um so um well i i just want to yeah, i just want to point out i've already seen uh so-called mutual aid networks set up in germany right. for ukrainian women refugees uh who are looking to make some money through the sex trade uh oh, that's man, that's, that's out there but you know it's so funny to hear uh zelensky you know talk about how they're not going to pay back these loans in light of what's happened uh in, in in this year i mean uh canada gave 120 million loan uh in in late january another 500 million uh in on february 14th um you got you got 300 million uh 337.5 million from france uh germany's been giving you know billions uh since 2014 uh you know even japan is i'm looking at a list right now of uh countries that have given financial aid japan has given 200 million in late february uh the united states 1 billion uh, 1 billion from obama in 2014 200 million from trump under biden it was 200 million in late january and then of course 13.6 billion uh in humanitarian and and military aid um uh this march so i mean you have like this like you said like a ponzi scheme you know um uh, of just you know basically foreign governments propping up financially the ukrainian government so you know you can say oh ukraine's a sovereign country but you know if you owe billions of dollars to foreign governments how can you call yourself sovereign um that's that's a puppet government that's that's how you make a puppet government and, and of course there's the imf and the world bank and those kinds of international financial institutions that uh that are controlled also by the united states right right exactly <clears throat> there was there was a super chat that i missed earlier and somebody's asking so here it is hey dan ask alex my question <laughs> all right this is from mr <laughs> FNG. I'm. I don't know what this is in reference to. I don't know if you do. You know what that's in reference well, to? Well, the question was above, and I kind of missed it. But go ahead. I've spent more time on Reddit in the past few weeks than I have in my entire life, um, because it it really is a like a central hub for Ukraine propaganda. There's all kinds of subreddits. Um, I mean, I I don't really know. Uh, I don't know what the question is, but um, I'll. If you want to ask the question again, Mister Thirteen FNG? Uh, we can. I mean, I mean, can. it seems it seems to be a place, a central hub for uh, for the dissemination of pro-Ukraine propaganda, and I think it's also been a uh, a pretty popular place for uh, foreigners who want to volunteer to like coordinate. Um, they have the Volunteers for Ukraine subreddit, which is very popular. Um, I I reported on some 
uh, post there by a guy who who went to volunteer and had a bad experience and wound up leaving. Um, and and you know what he said about uh, he said that they were foreigners were being used by uh, as cannon fodder. Uh, that's been corroborated by other people that I've talked to, and I, I'm looking forward to sharing more on that in the near future. Um, but this seems to be the experience is that, uh, that people who are volunteering are finding themselves in really bad situations. And when they go back on, uh, Reddit to like explain, Hey, this isn't what I thought it was going to be, or what I was told it was going to be, uh, they get called a Putin stooge. So I, I think it has to do with the, the culture of Reddit, which is like extremely liberal, um, that, you know, it's like, it's like uh, Uber liberal, um, or ultra liberal, I should say, um, and so you have a lot of people who are like, you know, keyboard warriors who are really gung ho about uh, beating Russia um, and and even throwing themselves in front of the Russian military uh, to to save uh, this like ideological uh, mainstream media, in, you know, in uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the, this cause that's that's been uh, promoted to them, you know? Yeah, I. uh I hope we answered the question because I did promise that anyone who did a super chat would um, we'd we'd try to try to respond. Um, so I'm I can't say I'm much of a Reddit guy. <laughs> I can't I can't speak to to Reddit a whole lot. I haven't I haven't I don't know the investigations I've been doing lately. I've found in in PR websites for for whatever yeah. reason. It's there's there's so much propaganda out there. You can yeah spend your days like your time like alex uh delving through reddit subreddit yeah i i have it well or <laughs> no hey no shame come on this, man this is, this is how, no, well or me well, i'm just on i'm Listen, just on jack pro, you know pr website yeah so you know um that's it's all part of it's all part of the job um so uh um all right well hopefully hopefully we answered that um i mean there, i don't know there's 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 Hey, it's better than TikTok, right? I, I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, those millennials who did that training with the Biden with the Biden administration, I feel like they really are turning the tide here. Yeah, you know, they convinced me that Putin is a very bad man. <laughs> um, but he needs a time. Um, he needs a, a time out. Time yeah. Up. Oh yeah, Pu yeah. Putin needs to think about what he's done. <laughs> what he's done for for uh for us he's making my gas prices go up right yeah um, i mean and that's that's i mean that's i'm glad you said that because that's like kind of a major takeaway i think from my my piece um is that you know if this is going to be like a long-term protracted war what are the economic consequences of that you know right you know you have you have people in the senate like so gung-ho about this they're going to have to explain, I hope they're going to have to explain to their constituents why gas is so high and it's going to be so high for for the next, you know, five, 10 years, however long they want to make this. Um, the same thing with Europe. I mean, Europe gets so much so much of its goods from China. Well, Russian airspace is closed. So, you know, you can't fly cargo from China to uh through russia to europe and it's a lot more expensive it, it, uh, a few weeks ago i read 80 percent more expensive to ship goods uh and i mean this is just the beginning so you know i think that this is like the west is really shooting themselves in the foot here because you know they they put these sanctions onto russia to stir up popular unrest that's the that's the ideology of sanctions this is what they always do well i think it's going to backfire and it's going to stir up popular resentment in the united states and europe right yeah i mean biden just said yes was right. that yesterday yeah. that that uh you know it's, it's not only russia who's gonna suffer it's it you know it's also it's also uh you know people in in the west and there's gonna be food shortages yeah i mean isn't that what they always what they always say about you know communism and socialism right. that that means long lines and food shortages but Red now lines. we're gonna have that yeah, yeah, and yeah. And now exactly. there's no wheat. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's what that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to like enlist in order to support the Azov battalion and, you know, so and the Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh like meme warfare. 
neo-Nazi right. meme warfare. Um, so somebody just copy and pa- posted the copy and pasted that comment, and now I've lost it again. I'm here. It is here. It is okay. Th- this was the original comment that thank you, Mark Mark Corbett Wilson copied from uh from earlier oh, I see. um so maybe this maybe we did answer it you've covered state pr stunts propaganda campaigns very well can you shine light on the campaign taking place in reddit forms mike so i think but i think I, you kind of I, discussed yeah, it. That's, yeah that's it and all that's right. all i have because i mean it's just that one subreddit that i've i've browsed a few times of uh, yeah. people talking about their experiences volunteering right right <clears throat> um well i think it's pretty good you know we've talked about a fair amount between the you know pr propaganda cia cutout campaigns that i talked about earlier on then how the you know alex breaking down how the west is just going to fuel this thing in order to bleed russia knowing that uh that ukraine can't actually achieve any sort of real victory um so I think uh, we you can wanna, call it there. It, yeah, I mean, unless you want to talk really briefly about uh, this kind of intersection between our our articles uh, of Yevon Kadas, uh, who you sure. you published that um, that meme that that was you know produced by the Ukrainian government or people working for the Ukrainian government, uh, glorifying this guy. Uh, this is a guy who. Go ahead. I think a lot of those memes that I came across, some of them were made by actual Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, graphic artists. But then a bunch of them were um, like crowdsourced. Basically, yeah. I think they put out some kind of initiative around, you know, a bunch of them like their names are on the files of who created it. And, oh, so, okay. and they're in these different folders. So it's like, you know, some professor in Germany had his students do a bunch of memes. And so some of that, you know. Or, but it's still part of the operation, so. right? The, it's yeah, yeah, still, yeah. It's still in it's the published. arsenal of the information war, right? And it's published on this, on this, you know, in this dossier. So it's like, yeah. well, this is now official Ukrainian government propaganda. Right. So, no, I don't, I don't mean to downplay it, but it's just kind of like shows how asinine it is that they're just like, you know, we yeah. just need any kind of we just need propaganda, guys. Just put, you know, draw pictures of Russians as orcs with their heads cut off and, you know, praise Bandera and Yevon Karas. We just, you know, yeah. help us out. Fight for Ukraine. Um, but but yeah, go ahead. I mean, yeah, what were you going to say? So, I, you know, I talked about him a lot in my in my uh, first article for the Gray Zone on Ukraine, uh, which is, a you know, a couple of weeks ago is before this one that we've been talking about. Um, but this is a guy who, uh, you know. He was a leader in in the Maidan coup. There's uh, excellent footage from the BBC interviewing him, where he says he's not a, a Nazi, but you know he uh, he he's concerned about the influence of Jews and Poles and Russians. Um, he's giving this interview from the C14 headquarters uh, in Kiev, which were taken over by the communist from the Communist Party. And during this footage, they cut to B-roll of a Russian military hat uh, with a swastika carved into it. So as he's saying, I'm not a Nazi, there's like a swastika nearby. Um, Now, of course, he's more open about being a Nazi and very proud of uh, the role that Nazis played in in the Maidan coup. Right now, if you go to his YouTube channel, while RT, of course, is banned from YouTube, Yevon Kadas, his channel is unaffected. And he's posting footage from the front lines, calling it a holy war, saying, if we die, it's okay because we died fighting a holy war. Um, They they really see it as like an attempt to uh, create a Fourth Reich um, and and, and actually not just like gain control for the Nazi factions in Ukraine of their own government, but also spread that throughout Europe. So that's like kind of uh, the other potential for blowback that I think people need to consider on top of the economic. Um, but C14, Yevon Kadas' organization, uh, they got a contract with the Kiev city government in 2016. Uh, months later, they're uh, taking axes and and uh, burning down uh, and destroying Romani camps, uh, committing pogroms. Uh, on camera cheering themselves on as they do it. This is all published in my first article. Um, and again, you know, Zelensky has collaborated with these guys when Zelensky was trying to implement what's called the Steinmeier formula, which would have given Donbass uh, independent elections. 
uh, the hardline Nazi factions, Azov and C-14 and, and right sector and all them, they, they all protested it. So what did Zelensky do? He brought them to the table and consulted them on the peace process. Yevon Kadas, I published photos of him meeting with Zelensky in, during that time. So, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, it's like full circle now, and it's incredible to see uh, the Ukrainian government using him as a propaganda device, you know? Right. And now it's like every time, you know, there was there was such an obvious moment when the but Zelensky's Jewish, yeah. when that like talking point went out. If you look at, you know, mainstream media, if you just kind of like all of a sudden it was like every single article was hyping up his Jewish his like Jewish identity, um, which is your article shows, you know, was he was never into his jewish identity right. before it was like nothing to him um and then all of a sudden you know it's convenient and it's kind of the perfect you know it's kind of the perfect um um distraction i guess or the perfect fallback for like basically a a, a state run by nazis to say well, we have a jewish president so how right. can there be nazis and so you know your article yeah this is another investigation alex did published a couple of weeks ago showing um how you know, Zelensky worked very, very closely with um, with these Nazis. And so, well, it's, you know, it's I mean, a it's a straw man because because Putin right. never said that Zelensky was a Nazi. Uh, you have members of his of Putin's party, United Russia, uh, going on BBC and saying Zelensky's not a Nazi. He's afraid of Nazis. He's Jewish. Um, but rather, the, the, the argument has been is that Nazis have been able to take hostage the people of Ukraine put you know guide governmental policy in their favorite direction and are used by the government to enact terror on on anyone who doesn't agree with uh their agenda right right exactly it's like i mean if there is a if there's a you know comparison i mean jews who collaborated with nazis they were called capos yeah and they were you know not uh held in very high regard um so maybe that's you know, if there's like some kind of World War II comparison, maybe that's it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's just the most like cynical and disgusting, um, you know, deflection to just say, well, he's Jewish. So right. how could there be Nazis? Right. It's, you know, um, so. Um, anything else you want to add, Alex? No, I think I think we did a pretty good job. I uh, right, I can't then, uh, I can't wait to read your forthcoming investigation on what you just uh, explained before I came on. <laughs> oh, that was yeah, good stuff, know. man. <laughs> it's I mean it's crazy. I just found that like an hour before the live stream started, yeah. and then and then uh, you know I was like, all right, let's let's do this. That was like better than a shot of coffee. So you saw it here um, first, folks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm just you know breaking stuff on the live stream, breaking breaking news, Ukrainian propaganda. Uh, uh, div Ukrainian PR that's actually Atlantic Council NATO propaganda. So, yeah. Um, awesome. All right. Well, Alex, thanks a lot for joining me and uh, hope everybody found this informative and uh, yeah, just share this around. Um, I'm Dan Cohen, Mint Press News, Behind the Headlines, and we'll see you next time.